Wow. So welcome wow. to our first TBR Tuesday episode. It's official. Official. <laughs> we'll see how long this takes. Our, we're, we're trying to keep them 30 minutes or less mm-hmm. uh, we, every other Tuesday. <laughs> we originally thought 15 and then we laughed in the face Yeah, the original our, was 15. <laughs> and we got on the record and we were like, mm, we sure did Not talk possible. for like an hour and a half recently, so. Yeah, I haven't edited that one yet. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> it's fine. You can chop probably a lot. And I had notes. That's the worst part. Like, I had a structure and a dream, and I, I failed. I dreamed a dream. And time gone by. Oh, boy. I do no. not know what that was from. Les no. Mis. I have avoided that. It seemed very sad. Of course it is. <laughs> it's and about the French Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll, that, it'll make you cry. Yes. And it's a great yes. song, though. I listened to this. I found, like, a duet version. I Dreamed a Dream. For those of you, including, apparently, Anna, that don't know, I Dreamed a Dream is yeah. a solo. Mm. Um, it's the one that Anne Hathaway sang mm. and, like, cut all her hair. Or, no. There's a different song where she cuts off all her hair, but post cutting off her hair, she sings this very sad song about how life has killed the dream she dreamed. It's a real bummer. It's a great song. It's one of my favorites from the whole show. It's gorgeous. Real bummer, though. It's a solo, and recently I found these two, like, it's two women who do it as a duet, so they harmonize Mm -hmm. for a lot of it. And it's one of those really good ones with, like, a gorgeous key change and stuff, so when you add in harmonies... Mm. I'm pretending like like, I know what that sounds like. I'm not musical. I will raise you that... And go in the opposite direction, I have a dream with Amanda Seyfried, who's also in Les Mis in Mamma Mia. Okay. <laughs> We're doing That's six little, degrees again. Yeah, exactly. A little happier. I know that one. I can dance. I, can I have guess. have my life. I guess. I just would like for you to get my Les Mis references. I'm so fine. sorry. I don't think I will ever be watching that movie. Anyway. TBR Tuesdays, Mm -hmm. the point is to talk about some books that we have read in the past few weeks that we think you should read. Yeah, I've read how many? I can't count. (laughs) We know counting's hard. Oh, in October? That's 12, 14 looks like. I think it's 14 for me. And I'm currently reading a few, but we'll see how that goes. Oh, and also, mainly we talk about historicals, but these, since we do read other uh, Sub genres. These will be kind mm-hmm. of a mix. These TBR mm-hmm. Tuesdays. So, well, my first one that I recommend. So I'm only going through the ones I recommend. I yes. like that's what's going to happen. Um, is what happens in Scotland by Jennifer McQuiston. This is a that was my third time reading it this year. <laughs> I am a perpetual rereader. Um, the audiobook is lovely. It's amnesia. It's like what happened in Vegas. So they wake up the next morning like naked in bed no memory mm-hmm. of what happens well he has a memory and then she is terrified and hits him on the head with a chamber pot and then totally concusses lovely. him and so he has no memory after that and then <laughs> slowly throughout the book he thinks she stole all of his money so he's chasing her he just has like her corset <laughs> and a dream and then she is just trying to remember what happened high jinks ensue and i found it hilarious it is truly everything i want in a book it does start like they don't really they're not on the page together until like 50 percent. so like it's a tough sell to some people i get it but i was there for all of it and i he says good girl during the sex scene at the end which i missed on my first read (laughs) so not missing that ever again um and it wasn't like the steamiest thing it was like explicit adjacent but the lead up was so good that like i don't always need you know anything like over the top or even just like like explicit if the vibes are there and for me the vibes were there so i recommend that one the step back is beautiful and um like i said the audiobook is also very good well, so i have another scottish hero Ooh. not historical but i have been slowly but surely making my way through the immortals after dark series mhm which much to our friend Jacqueline's delight, um, because she loves those books. I am doing it slowly because I can only do like I have to mix it into my other things. There are a lot. Otherwise, there are a lot. But also, I know if I started binging them, I wouldn't yeah. stop. That's what I fear. That's where yeah, I'm at right now. And I now. don't really want to listen to like what is it mm-hmm. like 18, 14, 18? It's a sure. It's, it's a 18. sure lot. Yep. 
it's a lot of books, and mm-hmm. I don't know that I have the mental capacity to listen to that yeah. many audiobooks. Yeah. I think Robert Petkoff would just melt my brain if I did that. I read two. The first one, the one that has a Scottish hero, is uh, Wicked Deeds on a Winter's Night, which is the third book in the series. And it is a werewolf and a witch. The werewolf is Scottish. As it should be. Of course. As he should be. Robert Petkoff kills that Scottish accent. It is so good. Um, that is the first of the se- – like, I've enjoyed the book so far. That's the first one that I was, like, on board with the plot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The romance wasn't e- – I mean, it was good. I enjoyed the romance just fine. It wasn't my favorite couple of the series so far, but I really enjoyed the plot. And then my favorite of the series thus far, and it'll be real hard I'm to talk. I'm so excited for this is one. the next one, Dark Meets at Night's Edge, which is uh, a ghost and a vampire. A crazed vampire whose brothers have chained him to a bed and trapped him in this mansion to try to detox him um, from his bloodlust that has literally driven him crazy. And he sees this woman and no one else can see her. So he thinks he must be hallucinating, you know, because he's crazy. But no, it turns out it's the ghost of the woman whose mansion this was, who was murdered 80 years ago by her fiance. And no one in those 80 years has been able to see her, but he can. Because they're faded mates and they have to fall in love. Ah! Also, virgin <laughs> hero, vampire, like My Russian accent. My favorite thing. Oh! Virgin book hero gets me every time. Actually has no business being as good as it is. I don't Thank understand you. why it's so good. It's a perfect book. Caroline's making me read them in order, so I can't just start with you that one. You have to understand, I like, the, all the couples from the previous books <sighs> are showing up in I this know. book. And, like, I want to, but I also just want the instant gratification. <laughs> Marikata and Bowen are really good, too. And you haven't even read the first one yet. No, which... I've read the second one. We read that one for book club, so. But Lachlan is so, like, his, Robert Petkoff's voice for him is so good. Anyway, this is our or my, I guess, PSA that everyone should be reading Immortals After Dark. After checking the content warnings, there's some dubious consent. The first one's a lot of, like, non-consent. So maybe if that's not your jam, this probably isn't for you. However, those are my paranormal wrecks. Okay, and then going up top, I just, well, just, um, earlier this month, I finished Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalola. It was... I thought it was, like, an adult romance, but I think it's almost, like, new adult, like, in that kind of, like, gray area between, like, YA, new adult, adult contemporary, because Mm -hmm. they were only, like, 20 years old. They were in college, and I am only 24, but I felt so substantial, like, so much older than they were Mm -hmm. that it didn't quite feel like adult, and there's only, like, one spicy scene, and she is part of the African Caribbean Society at the college. Um, So I think it's supposed to be maybe geared a little bit more towards the younger audience. Um, But I really recommend the audiobook. It, the writing sounded and was structured a lot like spoken word and the narrator was absolutely perfect for it. Um, I definitely was holding on like with my life at 2.0 speed, Um, but I I stuck it out (laughs) because I was like, no. I'm not a quitter. Um, Could so just slow it down like a little I, bit. You probably should slow it down. Um, but it was a very soft. It was so cute. And it's kind of like she – he's like new to campus and she just thinks he's a player. So then she has this radio station and she's like, watch out for him. He's a player. And then he's like, well, that's rude. <laughs> and then I think they have to like fake date or – they yeah i think it's like fake dating and then they're actually dating and that's a whole thing um but i thought it was very good and the cover is gorgeous so that's true i have the audiobook i i need to listen to it so my i i think i really only have one contemporary recommend conte- that word is so hard for me to say contemporary recommendation every word. well really it's two and it's Adriana Herrera's Dating in mm, Dallas mm-hmm. series, but specifically I liked On the Hustle the best, which is the one that just came out very recently. Um, I think October 11th. Uh, Here to Stay is also great. You don't have to read Here to Stay in order to understand what's going on with that. On the Hustle, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's overlapping friend groups, so you'll recognize characters from the first one in the second one, but you don't have to read them. Um, I just love... A man obsessed is yes. what it is. So, well, so loosely the premise of this is that she 
uh, Alba, the main character, uh, is hustling, hence the title on the hustle. She works a lot of jobs. She has a dream to do her own or to run her own business, uh, designing Mm -hmm. people's dream bookish bedrooms. Well, sign me the hell up. Yeah. It's how I was like, actually, where can I hire her? Um, where like she designs them based on your favorite book it's oh, listen it sounds so good it sounds so good anyway one of her jobs that is supposed to be temporary for about a year is as a personal assistant to this super rich hot former olympian real estate mogul guy you have my Theo. attention yeah um but he's awful to her well he's really he's just kind of cold and indifferent and he's a really demanding boss he's very picky about his coffee like she hates his guts and she ends up working for him for three years and then finally she puts in her two weeks notice or whatever she's taking a week of vacation and then she puts in her two weeks and she's gonna do it she's gonna follow her dreams start her business and he he takes it better than she expected Mm -hmm. and he has kind of an interesting response because she was really Mm -hmm. afraid of telling him and he's actually pretty cool about it and then she goes to visit her friend in dallas Mm -hmm. and ends up getting this opportunity to design a library and so she sends him an email and is like i'm actually not coming back and he calls her and he is so mad (sighs) He is so mad at her and he's like, how much do I have to pay you to like get you back here? And she's like, how dare you even ask me that? And of course, it turns out he has been basically in love with her the whole time well, that she's worked for I him. I would expect and accept Obviously, because she's um, amazing. I was in love with her too. But he didn't want to make any – like he was fully aware like he's the boss. Mm-hmm. He can't do anything. So he had very strict so boundaries n- for himself. <laughs> he wasn't going to have a consensual he was not workplace going to relationship. Have a, he was not going to lose focus and have a consensual <laughs> workplace relationship. He had really strict boundaries, which is why he was like much colder with her mm-hmm. than with anybody else. Mm-hmm. And he was waiting – for her to like achieve her potential and go start her dream in New York so that he could then pursue that relationship. And then mm. she's like, I'm actually not coming back to New York. Unfortunate and for him. Devastating. A critical blow. So <laughs> he goes, there's a lot of like, you know, romance reasons. Uh-huh. Things happen. And to save his business, he has to go do this um, reality TV show in Dallas. And he requests, it's a design show. Okay. And they partner people up. And he's like, her, I want her to be the designer for it. So they have to work together. And they end up living together in the same apartment. And basically, the entire book is him being like, actually, I just want to take care of you. I want to cook you food. And I want to give you massages. Just let me. And she, of course, is resistant to that. She's used to being uh-huh. very independent and taking care of her family. Uh-huh. But it's literally a whole book of him trying to convince her to take, like, let him take care of her. Stop. Which is exactly what she deserves. It is also – it's uh, – she's an Afro-Latina heroine. Um, that is a huge part for her is – I believe her parents are immigrants. She's Dominican. Um, And so her family and that whole culture is really important to her. And also Theo is half Dominican, half Greek. And so he has a really interesting cultural dynamic. And um, there are some really lovely interactions and conversations around that. So just wanted to mention it. That sounds so fun. It is so fun. It's also, I mean, it's got some heavier topics in there that I Mm -hmm. think were handled really well. Um, It was quite lovely. How did you like the reality aspect? Because a lot of times I don't like that. And so that – I think I think I saw so that. So surprisingly – It worked? M- well, there was almost none of it in the book. Thank Most God. of the, the time with them was spent mm-hmm. like forced proximity in their apartment or like doing things for her business or him coming to help her with things. There was very little time spent on set. I, I actually don't think there was ever any filming mm-hmm. really except for the very end. So Yeah, I always think I'm going to love that. And yeah. same thing with, like, washed up celebrities. Like, that's really big right now. And then I never like it. So I've set, like, boundaries now for myself. But that sounds – No, I don't either. Okay, This would yeah. be fine for you. Awesome. My my next one kind of flows into that, like, reality moment. Astro Parker doesn't fail. It mm-hmm. hasn't come out yet. When is the pub date? One second. My Goodreads is it's loading. November 22nd. It, yep. So soon-ish. Um, I loved this book so much um it's a sapphic romance between a lesbian jordan and then a bi heroine astrid obviously of astrid parker doesn't fail (laughs) well she fails a little bit and then then that turns out all right oh you know what alba in on the hustle is bi too Mm -hmm. i totally forgot about that i know i make all these notes and then do i read them no (laughs) so jordan um her grandmother has an inn in uh the pacific northwest and she applies and they get on this like HGTV adjacent 
reality show of like renovating it. The inn is obviously, you know, struggling for money as, you know, all <laughs> inns are in romance. And then Astrid is the um, stepsister of the uh, heroine from one of the heroines from book one, Delilah. And she's obviously like the very like cold, reserved, like emotionally, like closed off because her mother is very, um, you know, over the top. And in the last book, you kind of see her thaw a little bit. And then this one is where you really get to see it, which I was really looking forward to. Um, So then she is the interior designer. And her vision does not align with what Jordan wants. And you can clearly tell that Jordan's vision is like way more accurate to what would reflect the vibes of the um, the inn, which is a little bit spooky, perfect for like spooky season or after spooky season when it actually comes out. Um, and so they're uh, just one thing about it. They they have like an anti meat cute. Jordan runs into her with a full cup of coffee, a meat and then disaster, a, if a you meat will. disaster. Well, it's which like I believe M-E-A-T. Estelle from Forever <laughs> basically trademarked. It yeah, it truly is because she's wearing her favorite dress. She looks absolutely like ravishing in it. And then it gets mm. like it's white. She gets knocked on her ass, coffee all over it. And it oh I do That's love devastating. That. I would request um a like a like a pre order incentive that would be what the inn looks like because they have a lot of interesting design concepts and I just want to see how they work. Because I don't know how sa- like sage green cabinet tree in an entire inn with like other things work, but like I want to see it. It's not an incentive, but I would love someone to fan art it or something. Um, but that one is very fun. And that's contemporary too. Also, another queer contemporary romance that I think if you liked those vibes, it's not quite the same, but I think it has mm-hmm. a similar like kind of meat disaster. Like they get off on the wrong foot. It takes a while to kind of see each other. It's mm-hmm. got a lot of depth that deals with some more like heavier topics um is and it's a forever book so i do (laughs) i do work for the publisher my standard (laughs) disclaimer but i just wanted to mention it quickly um is season of love which also came out Mm -hmm. this month um and it's a jewish sapphic holiday romance about our heroines uh both inherit are two of four people to inherit um one of her okay okay (laughs) miriam is one heroine the other one is noelle Noelle is the manager of the farm, and Miriam's okay. great aunt Cass is the one who owned it, and she oh, passed truly. away. So kind of and similar, yeah. Left it to Miriam and Noelle and their cousin Hannah and this other guy, well, which hello. he has a whole backstory. Mm-hmm. Um, and Miriam is estranged, but they have to save this Jewish-owned Christmas tree farm, Kerrigan's, and it is very delightful. So I I, read it. I love seeing a Hannah character that's not a maid. When Hannah gets the next book, you can tell because it's – Look it at up. that. Look at that. In every historical, except for like one Mary Balog, she, like the Hannahs are always the maids. And I'm like, you know, I wouldn't have liked that. <laughs> but also I would have been a terrible debutante. I can't dance. I don't <laughs> take instructions well. Like probably that was what I was meant for <laughs> if we're being honest. Maybe this is why you like Scandal in Spring. Maybe that's why you just like Daisy Bowman. Cause you I do. Identify. I really do. <laughs> I'm just not fit. See, I identify with Lillian far more than I do with Daisy. <laughs> oh, God. I've got a strange accent, apparently. <laughs> if I say bagel, people laugh. It's- bagel? <laughs> is that a Midwest thing or a Hannah thing? Is this like Do you, not, do you hear puzzle? a difference? Because I sure don't hear a difference from what you said and what I said. Bagel. Bagel. No, see, you're saying bagel. <laughs> but see, I don't hear it. This is a middle. I don't know how you a, don't hear it. You have a, a lot of words like, a... like that, though. I have noticed. You say vag, I... where I would say vague. Yeah. See, I don't. I don't. I can't track any of that. It's a. It's a Midwest thing. <laughs> As opposed to a fix the puzzle <laughs> Hannah family thing. I don't. Did I say this on the podcast? I don't. I don't think, know. I don't <laughs> remember. If you did, it's in a future episode. It's in a. Okay, so. My mother, ha- she says fix a puzzle, and I did not realize that wasn't a thing said. So I grew up saying, I'm going to go fix this puzzle. My family is a family of puzzlers. We fix a lot of puzzles. So it comes up a lot in conversation. And my dad married my mother, and apparently he just took it in stride. But at no point did he tell me, hey, Hannah, I don't think you should say that in public. Because everyone's going to look at you real weird and say, you what? You did what to that puzzle? And 
To which I'll say, well, I fixed it because it was a giant slab of cardboard cut. If anyone's listening who also says fix a puzzle, please, please let us know. I need like another person. So then I find out that he's just been going with it. Like he knew it was wrong, but he's just accepted it. And so apparently my grandma says it, my mom's mom. And so then my mom says it. And I just thought it was a standard phrase, but no. I mean, I've had several things that I suddenly discovered were my family only things, and it's always jarring. It jar. It truly is. I don't. I because then I get really self conscious when I'm talking to people about puzzles. So then I'll be like, I'm gonna do a puzzle, which it just does not flow naturally (laughs) for me. I I don't get it. Um, but yeah, back to the bagel thing. I went to grad school in uh, Portland, Oregon, and sure. Do I love bagels? So I get to class. Hey, guys, look at my bagel. And they're like, uh, you're what? And I was like, my bagel. And then they're like, uh, say Wait, again. Why did you walk into class and say, hey, look at my bagel? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. What was that conversation I don't, like? Okay. I feel like I was like, this is a really good bagel. <laughs> I also would have laughed at you. Just so you know. Everyone did. And I and I can't, like, I can kind of hear, like, if you really take the time to tell me, like, what the difference is. But I truly can't tell the difference between someone saying it and me saying it and it's a whole thing so well that was a wild tangent <laughs> um was that my book that was my book right or was that no you I think you i had just season of love okay yes, so it's you so then uh quick ya um soulmates by susan lee um uh it's so good. It's a YA rom com. Hannah is a Korean American. She's in San Diego. And then her childhood friend Jacob has moved to Korea and has become a K drama star. She, Hannah, her name is Hannah. Forgot about this. So I had a great time. Um, and she's not expecting him to come home for the summer. He's having a pretty rough time with just the management of the, um, you know, of his PR agent and the show and he goes back to San Diego and they just have a very cute time being a little bit of enemies because they both hurt each other when he left. And, um, it, it was super cute. The ending was a little much, but it fit with what you knew it was going to happen. I mean, he's a K drama actor, so Mm. it's going to be dramatic. There's going to be things like studio trying to separate them. Um, but I really loved it. The audiobook was very good. And I I read the arc and then um, I listened to the audiobook once it came out. So, so speaking of romances with heroines with our names, <laughs> we both read After mm-hmm. Midnight by Teresa Medeiros, and I have not finished it just yet. I will tonight, and you have already read uh, the the Vampire Who Loved mm-hmm. Me, which I was not expecting those books to be as right? good as right? they are. They are well. The second one is a vampire romance so the is first the first one, one caroline is i'm trying to figure out how to pitch this it without vamp- giving anything away. romance but it's almost not but it is i mean it is but it's not though but if you, don't you have to, spoil to see it. <laughs> i don't know it's not spoiling it i mean you know there's like something well, i sure on. didn't know because you were assuming okay i didn't know what to assume i knew there was like bamboozle into foot but i didn't know <laughs> all you need to know, know is that there are vampires mm-hmm. but the question is who are the vampires mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you sure will wish you knew a vampire at that moment who has you a sure love will. for you you sure will um the writing was really good mm-hmm. it wasn't overwhelming very spicy, fast but the sex scenes were really great yeah it goes super fast okay the sex scenes in the first book after midnight there was one scene that is one of my favorite scenes of that type of scene. I won't say what kind of scene it is because it kind of gives it away, but um, very good. And I had to reread it because I was like, did we actually get what I thought we got? We sure did. We sure did. Mm-hmm. It's a great book. Um, and then another book that has a Caroline in it is the second Manda Collins book. Mm. Uh, I'm reading the, the first Well, the second right Lady's Guide Manda Collins book. Um, an heiress's Guide to Deception and Desire. Um, yes, but my actual recommendation is another forever book. These are all forever books. Um, the third one is The Spinster's Guide to Danger and Dukes. It does not come out until March, but I wanted to put it on your radars. Is it so still read now? Do you know? 
a neck gallery? No, I think it was just for the weekend. Oh. Well, you lost. If, you're if you are a reviewer, you can request it on neck gallery. Mm-hmm. Um, if not, keep an eye out for it in March, and you can read the first two books, which are like I I like to say they're equal parts cozy mystery and historical romance. They're mm-hmm. not very steamy. They have about like one scene each. I. Um, I'm but the listening. To, are fun. Yeah, I'm listening to the first one right now. I already read it back when it came out. It's one of the first forever books I actually did read. Um, and I think back then I thought it was more mystery than romance. But on my reread, I am picking up more of the nuances of the romance. And the sex scene we got was actually very good. Mm-hmm. Her legs were over his shoulders. She was grabbing the headboard. He was like looking at where they were going at it. She got also a hickey. Just like, love Andrew Ever. Yes. Eversham. I can't never say his Eversham. last name. Eversham. Are you listening to the audio? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I still could get it like totally wrong, (laughs) but I'm almost done with that audiobook. Well, he's a Scotland Yard. Mm -hmm. He's, oh, I love him. That whole series is a lot of fun. I'm reading the first one so I can read the second one, which I haven't read yet. And then I have the arc of the third one. So that's my whole. um, The first one is sort of enemies to love her because like she ruins mm -hmm. his life. Um, And then she goes to a house party and finds a dead body and he gets called in. As one does. And so she just inserts herself into his serial killer murder investigation. And he is like, please stop. And she's like, no, which is a great dynamic. And Mary Jane Wells narrates, which I did not know the first time. I did not know that I loved her the first time I listened to this. So mm-hmm. here we are. Actually, I read the physical copy, so still didn't know. That's great. Um, Very good. My local library has them, so. And then the Maybe second one is uh, Second Chance, which mm-hmm. I love in historicals. Yes, because I have been it's seeing their appear- appearance. Very delicious. Yeah. It's a really good Second Chance. It's um, There is some murder, but the main mystery, I think, is more kidnapping. Mm. Um, and then the third the one is a fake engagement and another murder and blackmail and some other wild things. And shenanigans in caves. Um, my next one is I was doing a reread of <laughs> the Ruthless Arrival series by Kate Bateman. You've heard us talk about a daring pursuit. Um, so I read that one, but before that, I read a Reckless Match, and then that was all leading up to a Wicked Game number three has not come out yet. It still may be read now in Neck Alley. There were five hundred copies to claim, um, and it was there pretty recently. So if you haven't gotten it, I would check it out, see if it's still there, or you can request it. Um, in a later episode that we've already recorded, I stated that I was aflame in a Panda Express parking lot reading this book. It was so good. Uh, A Wicked Game, the third one. I mean, we know I love book two, which I think is still my favorite just because like, how can it not be? But this one is so soft and low angst. And I thought it was going one direction because he got stranded by a bad map and then he gets imprisoned. Oh, like in, you know, the beginning of the book, that's already happened. And then you find out, this is in the summary, I believe, that she's the map maker. So then he was like, revenge first and then seduction. But then he was like, revenge, seduction. And then he was just like, seduction, because he realized revenge didn't happen. Caroline's love for revenge, seduction. Revenge, seduction gets me every, it is so toxic and I could not care less. (laughs) I actually want it to be as toxic as possible. Yes. That's when it's at its best. When you're like, you're a bad person for doing this. Give me more. <laughs> That's the in- – I don't know if she's a bad person, but the entire plot of Queen Bee by Emily Howard, again, not out yet. But she is intent on revenge, and revenge happens, and she also has to seduce um, the main hero in there. It's a whole thing. It's like I'll historical YA, wait. which is beautiful. We don't and, have one planned yet, but when we inevitably oh. get to our revenge seduction episode, because you know what's going to happen. Um, I think my only other rec is a quick one. It's not really a romance, but it does have, like, there there is a romance, mm-hmm. if that mm-hmm. makes sense. And they, it does end happily, presumably. Um, and that is What Souls Are Made Of, a Wuthering Heights remix by Tasha Sari. Oh, yes. You told me about this one. It is... I mean, it's a YA. It's it's if you like Wuthering Heights, or honestly, listen, I don't like Wuthering Heights, but I loved this book. Yeah. Five stars, lots of ghosts. It's a South Asian retelling of it. Heathcliff is a dark skinned Indian man, mm-hmm. which I think makes the character of Heathcliff make a lot more sense. Um, and then Kathy and Hindley are also Indian, but they are raised as white children because they are light skinned. They're white passing, um, and it also just makes. I just think this is my canonical Wuthering Heights now. Yep. Everything makes more sense. <laughs> um, it is 
a like loose retelling in the sense that it you get kind of a lot of the backstory and mm-hmm. then it differs from the actual plot it diverges and it ends happily or at least hopefully <laughs> as opposed to actual Wuthering Heights <laughs> Um, yeah, Wuthering Heights, I have wanted to love it because Sandra Bullock's character to, too. in the proposal reads it every Christmas. But and why read Wuthering Heights when you can I read again know. The Magic by Lisa Kleypas? And I have not now, read What Souls Are Made Listen, you're going to read it. I'm magic. excited. But I just between don't like Again the, the Magic so. and What Souls yeah. Are Made Of, you're covered. That's all exactly, you need. Because like, I liked like the secondary romance in Wuthering Heights, but that first one was not for me. So, Well... I will say this for Wuthering Heights. It has some of the rawest lines, like raw, (laughs) R-A-W, rawest. I don't think that's a word, but rawest lines. He's more myself than I am. You say I killed you, haunt me then? (laughs) (sighs) Now I want to reread again the magic. Also, what souls are made of some of my favorite ghosts in literature. Ghosts are one of my favorite literary devices. You know, a good, like, literal Mm -hmm. but also metaphorical ghost. Mm -hmm. This is like one of the best examples of that but those are all of my regs yeah my other two we're gonna we have done or are doing episodes on them it's the league of gentlemen gentle women witches and then bringing down the duke so stay tuned for those episodes yeah sure don't know (laughs) dates right now um i have them but i don't remember they're in my calendar and i don't want to dig it out they're coming soon in a few fridays (laughs) I'm a child. You said they're coming, and I was like, ha, ha, ha. All right. I think the <laughs> the League of – the India Holton episode is, like, the th- third one from this Yes, time. I have it scheduled like already. It's already edited, scheduled, everything. So it's oh. coming soon. <laughs> I have to Not resist you're still so. giggling at this. <laughs> well, I'm trying to resist saying so will you. So – well, to be fair, I was laughing at that whole Daniel Radcliffe video of <laughs> him singing "She'll Be Coming Round the Mountain." Yeah, <laughs> we'll link that in the show notes. Mm. Oh, I don't watch the show. Ready. I don't watch the show. I just stumbled across this clip of Daniel Radcliffe dancing and singing "Coming." She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Six white horses. You're whatever. not prepared. If you ha- if you don't know None what we're talking about, prepared. I wasn't prepared. Um, so yeah, I kind of want to watch the show now, though. Uh, no, I, I do. Think- I want to live in the mystery in <laughs> the Chaos Elmo vibes of that clip. That's and good. I think I'll be I think I'll be good. Well, we sure have stayed near our normal episode goal length. Stop, don't say you'll do some editing magic. <laughs> Cut out some of our tangents. There's too many tangents. I suppose. But at at what cost? We're too funny to cut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> It seems like a we're too tragic statement. to cut. People need to have a have an underdog story <laughs> to root for. That's also not us. Well, we're just two gals. <laughs> that, that's it. Two gels. <laughs> gels. Have you not seen that in romance before? In gel. Romance? Gel. That's but them saying heard, girl, but gel. I know, but I've heard gel. No. Some <gasps> audio. I have. That's I horrible. Have. I'm sure you're right, and I'm like horribly wrong, and I'm I just like really confidently wrong. wrong and saying it with my chest, and I'm just. Absolutely I, maybe it's incorrect. like a GIF GIF of the 1800s. I hope it's not gel because I hate that so much. Well, I've always hate. Maybe I'm just wrong, and I've always hated it because of that. So who knows? Not me. Look at us. Who's to say? If I'm wrong and I just said that with my chest, just know that that's a regular occurrence. It's fine. <laughs> Y'all Google it yourselves. <laughs> Determine for yourself if, if it's gel or gel. I feel like I've heard it in an audiobook, but I believe audiobooks you. do also get things wrong. So They sure do. Wildly. <laughs> I'm thinking about you, audiobook I listened to recently where she said wanton like wanton. <laughs> It was like she moaned like a wonton, and I was like, "Excuse me, she moaned like a wonton." The end. Thanks for listening, y'all. <laughs> Go moan like a wonton. <laughs>